welcome back to my channel or if you guys are new here be sure to hit that subscribe button down below because I do make a ton of videos just about animals. Now today's video is going to be about housing male mice together. So I've gotten a lot of requests to do a mouse care video and that is something that, that I'm going to do for you guys but when I was um, you know putting together all of my thoughts for doing a mouse care video I realized that I was going to be spending a long time talking about housing and the social dynamics of mice and so it kind of just made more sense to do this video instead where I talk just about housing um, you know mice together and so focus on housing males together because that's a really big topic uh, but don't worry I am going to do a mouse care video for you guys in the future I know a lot of you guys have been asking me for that so don't worry I'm still going to do that but I thought that this video would actually be a really fun topic to discuss so I'm sure many of you who have clicked on this video are aware of the fact that I have two male mice living together so quick backstory on that uh, there's a pet store that we go to on a fairly regular basis in order to buy some food for some of the animals and so at that pet store they do have feeder mice uh, these are mice that are fed to snakes and so one of the mouse one of the mice um, little mouse escaped and he had been running around the store for a couple of weeks and so they kept trying to catch him and weren't able to and he was just really smart and was able to evade being caught but eventually he was caught and so the day he was caught is when um, we went in to, to buy some food and my husband Hyman felt really bad for the little mouse that he had gotten caught um, because it was I guess kind of this whole thing about how he had escaped and all of that so he decided to buy the mouse so that the mouse wouldn't actually end up as snake food and he asked me, so should we get him a friend? Should we get just one? Um, what should we do? And so my response to that was, well, um, let's get him a friend. Let's get him another mouse. Because he'd ended up being caught because he wouldn't leave his little group of family, his little family group of mice. So we decided to get him a friend and I was like, you know, worst thing that happens is that they don't get along and we put them in another cage so it's not a big deal so um, that's how we ended up with Pinky and the Brain and what led me to this decision was just the fact that mice are very social and so they the two males have been living together for I guess about a month now I guess it's been a month that we've had them and they've been doing really well together I'm actually really glad that we got um, Pinky uh, the Brain is the mouse that escaped uh, I'm really glad that we got both of them together because the brain really doesn't like human interaction. He really hates humans actually, which is understandable considering the fact that he got chased a lot. Uh, Pinky does really well with human interaction and you could tell when we brought them home that the whole thing was stressful for them, but having each other has made it less stressful. And I feel like the brain has, like he's a little bit more stressed easily than Pinky but he's constantly with Pinky and if Pinky ventures out to like use the wheel or get water or something then he follows and also is able to like eat and drink water and isn't like you know terrified of what's going on uh, but I can tell that they're enjoying each other's company because they don't have to sleep in the same hide but they always do now I've had male mice living together in the past uh, their whole lives they spent living together successfully I've also had male mice that lived alone and so I thought this was a really great topic to talk about, especially for new owners. Um, if you guys are clicking on this video because you're trying to find out if you should get one or two or uh, just anybody who's interested in the topic. So uh, I want to try to provide you guys with as much reliable information as I possibly can. So let's discuss the social dynamics of mice. So it really depends on the species of mice that we're talking about, uh, how their social structure works. Uh, the fancy mice that we have that we keep as pets or use as feeders uh, probably came from like the common house mouse. So now the fancy mouse is really a domesticated species um, that, that, that does make them different. Like having an animal that's domesticated is different than an animal that is still this very similar to its you know wild ancestor you can easily see this in things like dogs horses alpacas as well as other animals you can see how they are changing and how they're very different from wild ancestors so the common house mouse is a social animal I'm surprised since I got my mice I'm surprised at how many people have told me that mice are not social animals 
mice are, well, the common house mouse and uh, fancy mouse, they are a social animal. And uh, so are the males. Um, all the you know males and females, they are social. So in the wild, a male mouse's goal would be to control a small territory in which several females live in. He's not trying to go off by himself and avoid contact except for, you know, just breeding. They actually are social, so they'll all live in the same area. Now, of course, we're talking about nature, so the male mouse is going to want to defend his territory from other male mice and not let other male mice breed with the females that he has in his territory. So, of course, this doesn't always work out for the male mice, and it's the tougher ones that are able to have family units and all of that. But we can tell from, from watching them, from seeing all of this, that they are social and that their goal in life is to be with other mice. So just because they might not be able to, they might get pushed out or they might not be strong enough to take control of um, the a territory and have females, doesn't mean that they are solitary animals because their goal is to have that territory with other females. So we do know that male mice are social. Now that's in the wild. In captivity with domesticated animals, things change. Things that wouldn't happen in the wild do happen in captivity. And that's what I talk about a lot on this channel is understanding how your animal would survive and how it would act in the wild, but then also making certain changes to your care so that you can provide a better life for your animal in captivity. So recently, I've had a lot of people telling me that it is universally acknowledged in the pet community that you do not keep male mice living with other male mice. So based on that statement, I can tell that it is coming from somebody who is very easily manipulated into believing something based on who's telling them. Because anybody who's done research on this topic would realize that this is a widely debated topic in the pet community. It is not just, that's, that's the way it is, everybody agrees on it, no. Actually, in fact, there are people on both sides of the fence that argue over it. So that is why it's something that I think is really important to talk about on this channel. So you will find people that are breeders, people that are pet owners that are on both sides of the fence here. And some people will say uh, male mice should be housed with other male mice. They're social, it's beneficial for them. Then you'll have people also saying that no, male mice should never be housed with another male, that they should be housed by themselves, that that's better for them. Um, and so it, it's widely debated and there's people that, uh, there's lots of sources, um, people, breeders, uh, pet owners, there's lots of sources from people like that that would sit here and argue over it all day long. So for this video, I am decided that instead of talking about pet owners and our experience and all of that, let's use scientific research to determine whether male mice are better living alone or if they're better living with companies. So for this video uh, in particular, we are going to be looking just at scientific journals. So the first scientific journal that I thought would be good to discuss comes from the RSPCA uh, survey taken in 2017, which was to understand the practice of housing male mice in captivity. So it says here that the participants of the survey consisted of scientists, animal technologists, veterinarians, and members of the animal welfare and ethical review bodies within the United Kingdom, Europe, and the United States. Uh, it goes on to say that these professionals worked in universities, hospitals, research institutions, pharmaceutical, breeding facilities, and other places. So understanding that, we can definitely say that it is their job to understand mice and to know what they're doing when they're using um, these mice. And also, we're not talking about somebody who has a little bit of experience with mice. It does also say in the survey that most of these uh, participants, they had facilities with over 10,000 mice. So this is a survey that is going to be a lot about education and experience, so both of those. So I'm gonna be reading parts of this survey and it's important to remember that this is just about male mice. Females are not discussed at all in this survey. So here's a quote from the article. The survey demonstrated that there was a fairly good level of awareness of natural mouse behavior among respondents. The majority of people believed that male mice prefer to live with other mice and should be housed in groups. Most respondents reported that mice are group housed at their facility. Most were aware of the debate 
as to whether it is in the best welfare interests of male mice to house them with other males. So there were 147 people that took part in this survey and all 147 do have mice at their facility. One of the quotes reads, do you believe that male mice should ideally be housed with other males in the laboratory if breeding is not required? So, 123 people answered yes. So out of 147, 123 said that male mice should be housed with other male mice. So that's a pretty big number. That is more than the majority. Now another thing that was mentioned in this survey was different strains of mice that they were using at their facilities and whether aggression was more prevalent in certain strains than in others. And in this particular thing, it was about a 50-50 split of people saying, yes, aggression depends on the strain, and 50% of people saying that no, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, in my personal opinion, I'm inclined to believe this. I think that it makes sense. I think that it makes sense that there are certain strains that do that, that are more aggressive than others. It explains why we as pet owners have such different experiences. And we don't know what strains of mice we're getting when we get them from pet stores or wherever else it is. And so it could be why, like, it's perfectly fine for me, it's working out for me, and it's not working out for you. So I do believe that there are probably strains that are more aggressive. But in this particular survey, it was about a 50-50 between yes and no. And then they also asked how the mice were cared for and in keeping them together environmental enrichment did seem to be a big thing. Something that led to them being more successful in pairs. And this response was recorded here when they were talking about that. All breeders in the UK happily house males together with no problems. So I'm sure that not all breeders in the UK are housing male mice together. I don't think that's an accurate statement. But I think this statement goes to show that this particular scientist thought that it was such a like common practice that he thinks it just, well, everybody does that. That's kind of what I got from that response is that to him, it was just very, very common to see this being done for them to be housing together. And this kind of relates to the earlier comment that I made where people were telling me that it's a universally acknowledged. Clearly it's not. And then the next question asked, have there ever been any issues with male-male aggression or behaviors of group house males that suggest that there could be a problem? There were several recorded responses here from different people talking about behaviors that the mice would exhibit before becoming aggressive. Signs that housing the two males together was not going to work out. Now several people have told me that I'm taking a huge risk in housing the male mice together because one day out of nowhere they could just kill each other. I've been saying repeatedly that animals have a pattern of behavior. Nothing is random. And if you think that an animal did something random or out of the blue, it's because you do not understand how to read animal behavior and communicate with your animals. And guess what? On the survey, not a single person said that the aggression was random. All of them talked about certain behaviors that would be exhibited and several factors that could cause aggression before it actually happened. Now, in this part of the survey, when asked how they felt about the debate of housing male mice together versus alone, here's what some of them had to say. I think that it is not ideal to house males together. However, it is significantly better than single housing them. The environmental stimulation another mouse provides greatly outweighs the negatives of housing two males together. While male mice do not live together in the wild and will fight upon contact, suggesting that they should not be housed together in the lab, early pairing and the marked decrease in isolation stress makes it worth it. And another one. I expect that singly housing males for long periods of time, up to two years, must have a negative impact on their well-being and should be avoided whenever possible. And then my two favorites. It is difficult to balance the fighting risk and the risk of being lonely. As well as, in the wild, male mice live in groups, but not with other adult males. Singly housed, they occasionally overgroom and show other behavioral abnormalities. 
On the other hand, male mice house with their litter mates occasionally fight. So I think there is no ideal solution. I try not to use bullies as breeders as not to select for fight prompting traits. I like these two responses the best because that's exactly how I feel about the situation. And when it comes to caring for your animal, you try to do what is best for them. And that is not always easy and it's almost never black and white. The good thing is, is that there are ways to determining whether the animal is stressed or comfortable. And that's the beautiful thing about animal behavior. We don't have to guess how the animal's feeling. We can see how they are communicating with us. Now there were a few responses from people in the survey who do think that males are better off alone. And of course this was a very small percentage of the people that were asked in this survey. Uh, but they did have you know, their own things to voice about why males are better off by themselves. And that's the thing about the pet world, about the animal world, is that people are always going to disagree. They're always going to be arguing over what's better to do with them. Uh, but as pet owners, we try to find the best answer to our particular situation. But the thing to remember is that everyone in the survey did agree that male mice are social. The large majority did agree that it is better to house male mice with other male mice. And most of them said that it was also beneficial for the purpose of science. One of the things that they went on to say about that was that um, it was beneficial for science because uh, mice living alone had increased levels of stress hormones, irregular heartbeats, affected sleeping patterns, affected metabolisms, becoming obese quicker, and other factors that had an effect on procedures and scientific research. Another interesting thing is that housing the male mice alone also had effects on their brain development. So when I say that male mice are social animals and are better off with a companion, don't take my word for it, just look at the science. And all of this goes more in depth. I'm just trying to cover the basics for the sake of this video, but anybody who's interested in learning more, this is a really interesting topic. So all of my sources are going to be listed down below in the description of the video. So this is responses from people whose job it is to work with animals, scientists who work with um, mice and rats. These people, it's their job to know everything that they can possibly know about these mice. That is what their career is, what they're educated in, but it's, of course, it's some person's opinion and what they've learned through their own experience. So what about the mice? If we could give this survey to the mice, what would they answer? So scientists being what they are, turns out we kind of can ask the mice. Another scientific journal shows the results of letting male mice decide if they would rather live alone or with the company of another male mouse. This article can be found in the Journal of Applied Animal Welfare Science and was conducted by four scientists. So here's what they had to say about cohabbing versus isolation. The effects of individual housing on behavior and physiology in rats and mice, referred to as isolation stress or isolation syndrome, had become apparent as early as 1960s. Individually housed mice and rats became more aggressive. They show stereotyped behavior patterns, suffer from convulsions, and are nervous and difficult to handle. Physiologically, they may show reduced um, immunocompetence, higher tumor incidence, gastric ulceration, hypersensitivity to toxic agents, and increased pathology such as scaly tail. So they tried an experiment to test whether male mice also preferred dwelling near other males to stay alone. We conducted a series of preference tests in which male mice could choose between an empty cage or a cage inhabited by another male but separated by a partition. The history and relationship of the males differed between experiments. So what were the results of this experiment? The study concludes that separation and single housing for mice are not attractive solutions for overcoming aggression in group housed male mice and that alternative approaches such as improving housing conditions should be explored as a way of tempering intermale aggression. So maybe there are other pet owners who may or may not have ever owned mice that believe housing male mice together is wrong. But then you have these individuals who are incredibly well educated, 
saying that socialization is so incredibly vital for mice that males should be housed with other males. What I do on this channel is I try to bring you guys the best information possible for caring for pets. Now, this isn't always going to be what is popular, but I have the animal's best interest in mind. And my practices are based on research, evidence, data. And then at the end of the day, it's up to you guys if you wanna trust a pet owner or a scientist. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I had such a fun time making this video because it is a fascinating topic. And so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked what you saw on this channel today, you can find more information in the description of the video. Um, as it happens, there are tons of research and just information and articles about mice uh, because they are something that is studied um, across the world, really, by all types of individuals. So I think that's what makes it a really interesting topic is that there is just so much information out there that you can get. Um, so all of that information, the scientific journals and all that will be linked down below in the description. And if you guys are thinking about, if you're somebody that clicked on this video because you're thinking about getting mice or you're a mouse owner for a long time, uh, I hope either way you guys were able to learn something new and interesting on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new. And um, also if you've been subscribed for a while, why are you guys not over on social media? I have Instagram and Twitter, so go join me over there and we can talk more about animals and you can see all the awesome pictures of my pets. So thank you guys so much for watching this video today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.